Robot vacuums are one of the original and most common smart home products, and there's no shortage of them on the market. Every year someone comes along and completely changes the landscape of robot vacuums. This year, that seems to be our friends over at SwitchBot. For the last two years, I've been using the RoboRock S6 Pure, and while it's been great, it's certainly outdated and not the most feature-rich option out there. Thankfully, my friends over at SwitchBot have released a couple new vacuums, and they just sent me this, the SwitchBot K10 Plus, which is one of two vacuums they announced this year. The S10 is the one that I think is going to be the game changer for the smart home vacuum market, but mostly when it comes to mopping. Now the S10 is set to come out Q1 of next year, but today we're reviewing its little brother, and I do mean little, the K10 Plus. So as I mentioned earlier, SwitchBot did send this to me to review, but I always give my true opinion for you to make an educated decision and for the developer to take any feedback and potentially implement it. The SwitchBot K10 Plus is available now and is listed at $499 US, but at the time of recording this video in December of 2023, you can currently get the SwitchBot on sale for about 20% off, bringing it down to $399, which is an absolute steal for this product. Make sure you use the link in the description to check it out and maybe grab a last second Christmas gift. Inside the box, you get the vacuum, the base station, instructions, a packet of wipes, we'll get to that in a minute, a couple brushes, and an extra filter for the vacuum. Setup is pretty straightforward. Of course, you'll need the SwitchBot app to do so, so make sure you have that downloaded. I'll put a QR code on the screen here so you can grab it easily, but it will also be linked in the description. To get it set up in the app, you'll just hit the plus button at the top and choose your vacuum and follow the prompts. Once you have the vacuum added to your home, you'll actually have the opportunity to run the vacuum for the first time to create a map by choosing the vacuum or simply just create the map. I chose the map only option as it seemed to me it would likely go faster since it didn't have the vacuum while it mapped, but honestly, I can't really say if that's the case or not. After your vacuum finishes mapping, it will alert you and there you can set up your rooms, schedules, and even create a cleaning plan, which will allow you to set the standard cleaning option for each room when you start the vacuum. Digging into the settings, you get a bunch of options. Do not disturb time, sound volume of the robot's voice prompts, dust collection settings, which let you decide how frequently it empties the dustbin, the button light on the vacuum, child lock, which is the only reason I can put my vacuum in the foyer to clean regularly, Reduced collision mode, which seems to work okay. Carpet mode to kick up the suction on the carpets. Restart, reconnect. Cloud services, which allows you to connect it to certain smart home assistants. NFC, so you can operate the vacuum by tapping an NFC tag. And then FAQ, firmware and device info. Under the more category, you have a ton of helpful options like editing your map, viewing and selecting your map, which updates every time you run the vacuum, schedules, cleaning report, voice package so you can choose which voice comes out of the robot, remote control mode, find robot if it gets lost under a couch or something, and accessory usage life. Then of course you have cleaning times, room division options, no-go zones, empty dust bin which can be turned on or off, and the robot mode, vacuum or mop which changes depending on whether you have the mop attachment on or not. In use, it vacuums pretty much as well as my RoboRock S6 Pure did. I was actually very impressed. It's very quiet, even on its standard setting. I run it every night around 1 a.m. on standard, and we have yet to hear it from our bedroom, which is pretty nice that I don't have to sacrifice suction power even in the middle of the night. The number one thing that stands out to me is the size of this thing. It's so small and therefore can fit so many places most vacuums just can't get to. Here in my kitchen, I used to have to pull these bar stools out or sweep out from under them, or the vacuum just wouldn't get the stuff under them. But with this thing, it does a great job. It can even fit in between all these little areas under the stools, which is so nice. It also gets up under the cabinets way better than any vacuum I've owned in the past. And with a vacuum of this size, the dustbin is obviously going to be smaller, but with the self-emptying base, that doesn't even seem to matter. I know there are bigger vacuums out there with self-emptying bases as well, but at nearly a third of the price, you almost can't beat it. The size is not at all a detriment to the vacuum. Well, except for maybe the battery. It doesn't run quite as long as the larger vacuums will, but is this even a conversation anymore? The robot will clean until the battery is depleted, go charge, and get back to cleaning. That being said, it will clean our living space, which is a fairly good amount of space, without recharging, so it really isn't even a topic of conversation to me. In fact, the only time I ran into this issue is when I was cleaning each room multiple times. 
it did have to recharge before it finished that job, but that wasn't an issue. When the robot is finished or when the dust bin gets full, it will return to the base and auto empty, which is actually kind of loud and a little alarming. But the good news is it won't empty if you have quiet time set. If it's during your quiet time, it will vacuum, but it won't empty. Instead, it'll wait until you start it up again to empty, which is so nice since we run it in the middle of the night. The self-emptying base uses these fancy little 4-liter bags and it comes with a couple, and they say it will last around 70 days of cleaning depending on your use. Not too bad. Now let's talk about the mopping feature, if you can even call it that. Look, before I even go there, SwitchBot is literally changing the game of robot mops with their upcoming S10, which connects to your plumbing system. This is where those wipes come into play. The idea here is to grab the mop attachment from the lid of the base station and slap it on over the roller and it automatically goes into mop mode. You cannot vacuum while you mop, so you need to run the vacuum, possibly let it charge, then grab your wipe, put it on the mop attachment, slap that on the robot, make sure you've set your no-go zones in the map, and let it mop your floors. Personally, I used this once in my kitchen and it didn't even get a 6 foot area clean before the wipe was dry and dirty. For me, the only place I really see this being useful is here in this bathroom. It's small enough and it's tiled, so I actually ran the mop function in here and I think it does a job just fine. Overall, I really have been impressed by this device. The suction power, mapping, along with how quiet and small it is make it a real competitor in the current robot vacuum market. So should you buy this device? Well, obviously that's going to depend. Do you already have a robot vacuum? Does it do all the things you need it to do? Does it fit all the places you need it to fit? If you don't, I don't think you can beat this at this price. $4.99 for a robot vacuum that does a really good job is really hard to come by. I think it's a go. Again, thank you to SwitchBot for sending this thing out to me to review. Make sure you check it out at the link in the description. And before you go, make sure you check out this video about my personal favorite device from SwitchBot, the SwitchBot Curtain. And this is a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.